Let's talk a little bit about blade steel because this is something I don't quite get when it comes to knives and especially when it comes to higher end knives. Something that I found kind of strange the whole time I've been collecting knives actually. Some people really do like to buy the latest and greatest, the latest and greatest knife steels. And sometimes these knife steels massively inflates the price of the knife. For example, you might get one knife at £30 and you can get the exact same knife again with a better steel for say £50 or £60. Now that's definitely not a high end knife by any means but that's just an example. In fact the one I'm thinking of in particular is the Manly Wasp, it has one knife steel. In fact the most common knife steel with the Manly Wasp is uh, S90V. That said, they do offer some lesser steels for £20 less. The standard price on the S90V Manly Wasp is about £50. They've got a different version with a lesser steel for about 30 Now I'm thinking of higher price knives, mind you, at around two to maybe £500. Now, aside from being collectible, I don't really get why people would spend £500 on a knife. Now there's some characteristics or features or aspects or whatever that I would like to look for when I'm buying a knife, especially at that sort of price. But for me, blade steel usually isn't an option. Admittedly, I'm a bit more interested now. A bit more interested. I'm still not too fussed. I'm more interested in the handle material, bone, wood, whatever. And where it's made, and if it's made by hand or not, that sort of thing, and the overall fit and finish. To me, the steel uh, isn't quite so important. What am I getting out of here? Well, I don't really understand why you would pay three, four, five hundred pounds on the latest and greatest super steel on a knife. Because are you really going to use that knife? Are you really going to take that knife out of the box, put it in your pocket every single day, carry it, use it like you would any other knife because I think for most people it's probably not going to be the case and if you are what's the point in that because it's not really going to be that much different from a cheaper knife really and I mean I do have various knife steels I mean that Manly Wasp is S90V that stat gear ledge right here is in D2 these spider cores, I, I don't actually know what these steels are, I've barely even heard of them. What's this? CTSBD1, what the hell is that? I, I honestly don't know. I've never seen that on any other knife, except this one. Whoops. GIM1, again, what's that? Arthur Wright's sheep's foot here, this is C70. But does it really make much of a difference? Do you really notice that much of a difference in performance when you're cutting with that knife with the super steel? And I totally understand that different steels have different purposes. That um, certain steels are designed to be high, highly resistant to corrosion for, I don't know, taking out to sea with you or some of them are easier to sharpen, some are harder, some are softer and more brittle. That's absolutely fine. That I get. I mean, I, I get that you want, say, I don't know, a softer steel for a machete because you need to sharpen it more often. Or maybe you want a harder steel for certain pocket knives so you don't have to sharpen it as often. That's fine. I get that. But it's, again, when you get to the 2, 3, 4, 5, above 100 number uh, in price for your knife. Because you probably aren't going to want to use that like you would your other knives. You're certainly not going to use it the same fa the same way as you'd use your opinel. You're not going to pry with it. You're not going to beat on it. And again, I understand that these some of these steels stay harder. Uh, sorry, not stay harder. Stay sharper for longer. But then what? When you need to sharpen it after you've used and abused it for a year or two. Sooner or later, the day when you have to sharpen it will come along. 
And, well, apparently, I've never really, I mean, I don't have any super steals. Closest thing I've got to a super steal again is that S90V on the Manly Wasp. Well, the harder the steel is, the harder it's going to be to sharpen. So you're going to be at it for hours on a stone. If not, you're going to have to buy one of these sharpening systems. To be honest, I don't pay much attention to those sharpening systems because I like to do it by hand. Um, that's one of those things I'm proud of. One of those things I enjoy doing is taking my knife to a water stone or an oil stone and sharpening it by hand. I find the process enjoyable. I understand some people don't. Sometimes you just want to get your knife, your knife, uh, your knife nice and sharp, and back to work. That's fine. But some of these sharpening systems cost several hundred pounds. Some of them are upwards of, of six, seven hundred pounds, and you're talking fifty pound for a small stone. You can get a full set of Japanese water stones from two hundred and twenty grit up to eight thousand grit for under two hundred pounds, and then you can make a leather shop yourself. Well, that's all I use. Hell, you can even get the stones cheaper and get your knives razor sharp. So I really, I really, I mean, unless you're a serious collector, of course, I don't really see the point. I mean, for most of us, I think, a £10 Opinel, you know, something like this, this will do just fine. Certainly not any kind of super steel, just, you know, an ox that's just a, a high carbon steel, I, I think. That's all you need for the most part. This is a knife you could use and abuse, of course you don't have to. You could use this and it will sharpen easily at the end of the day. Now that said, eventually it will look something like this. The more you sharpen a knife, the more material it moves. By the way, this knife is from the Second World War, so this knife is over 70 years old. And considering its age, I think it's in really good condition. Of course, that's subjective. This is a knife that's seen a lot of use, though. Can you really say the same for your high-end 500, 600 pound folder with your super steel? Obviously, you don't want it to look like that. But to look like that, you'll have to use it. And, uh... I mean, I think it's fair to say that most of us don't have that sort of money to spend on a knife. I certainly don't. Fair enough, some people will spend three, four, five, six, however much, hundred pound on a knife and use it every single day. Fair play to you, but to a lot of people, that's just mental. That's just crazy. That's just insane. I could, I could not imagine paying that sort of money for a knife and putting it in my pocket every single day and using it. To be honest, even when I put a Swiss Army knife in my pocket, and even, you know, they're not expensive, you can get a Swiss Army knife even, you know, even for 20 quid. Hell, this, this one here, Arthur Wright, Spear, uh, Sheep's Foot. I only paid about 20 pounds for this knife and I get nervous when this is in my pocket in case I lose it. Nothing fancy, of course, just, you know, C70, I think, steel. Not saying that there's not an argument to be made for these high-end super steels, that's, again, that's absolutely fine. You know what, though? Like I said, I've got all these steels, I've got all these different knives, different shapes, whatever you like. You know what I grab the most, uh, most of the time when I need a knife. My go-to knife in the house is. The knife I'm reaching for whenever I've got a letter to open or, you know, a, a box to open or something needs cut. This. A cheap little Anglo Arms stiletto lock knife. Pay 20 quid for this. Sometimes you can even find them cheaper. Blades and Bows were selling them for five pounds uh, before they before they closed down. Look at that. Eight CR one, sorry, eight CR thirteen. Nope. Try again. Eight CR fourteen, MOV. 
to most people that's a really low end steel and again that's fine that's reasonably sharp it's not a hair shaving or anything like that but you know what it does 99 percent of the things that i want it to do and it does it fine and you know what else it doesn't have one of these super modern locks it's just a simple liner lock not had any issues with this knife at all i've used it a few times to sort of stab into a piece of wood lock never failed again i'm not saying that you shouldn't buy these super steels or whatever that's absolutely fine sometimes i do like the idea of buying some but at the same time, I don't see the point. I don't really see what the point is of spending £500 on a knife thinking I'm going to use it when this will do just a good a job. In fact, even though I'm a knife guy, I love all these knives when I want to open something. Especially if I'm doing repetitive cuts, I'd rather just use a Stanley knife. <laughs> Hell, a lot of the time I just grab something like this when I'm cutting cardboard. Or even something like this when I'm cutting cardboard. Because, uh, well, cardboard dulls blades quickly because it's abrasive. It's almost like rubbing your knife against a piece of sandpaper. Really, if you think about it. I mean, there is a reason why people who lay carpets use this sort of blade, because it's disposable. Because the carpet blunts the knife a lot. I mean, this is just my thoughts, of course. I, I don't see any issues with spending that sort of money on a knife for the super steels and again I would like to try some others but does it really make that much of a difference? Here's another example. A cheap little Richards. Not a bloody clue what kind of steel this has. Uh, high carbon I would imagine. And you know what? See the original owner of this knife, or owners of this knife. Do you think they knew what kind of steel it was? I highly doubt it and I would be really surprised if they even cared. They probably never thought about it, they probably thought, okay, it's steel, what about it? The other thing I would like to mention is, why is it just knives we talk about steel? It's just something that I find a little confusing. It's only really in the knife world, at least to my knowledge, where we're talking about the metal. Have you ever heard of anyone obsessing over the steel used to make hammers, for example? Have you ever cared what the steel is on your hammer that's in your toolbox? Do you care what kind of steel that is? Or your screwdriver, now the saw, that might be a bit, a bit of a different story. Or your chisels, maybe. I mean, with, ch with, with a saw, you, you, you kind of want the steel to be hard enough that it maintains its, the, the edge on the teeth long enough to, to cut, but also, if it's a traditional saw, easy enough to sharpen. With woodworking chisels and planes, I think you usually want a softer steel, so you can easily resharpen it. Especially if you, say, hit a nail. See, that's the other thing with those high-end super steels, say, X90V. Yeah, that edge might stay in there for a long time, but if you drop it, it's more likely to shatter. You're more likely to chip the edge. Say you are using this knife, and you chip the edge. Then what? You're going to be at that stone for a long, long time. And you're going to remove that much blued material, you're going to think to yourself, well, what's the point? I don't know how many images of spidercoes I've seen online of people who broke the blade in half right at the spidey hole. I mean, if you're spending £200 on a knife, £300 on a knife, and uh, breaks like that I, again i don't see the point and i'm uh, by the way i'm not hating on spyderco you can see i've got a couple here uh to be honest i think spyderco are a little bit overrated they're still kind of cool i mean i like my ukpk never really seen any pocket time you see something like an open l if you did chip the blade, guess what? Easy to fix. 
take it to the stone and you'll have that thing back up and running in no time. A, like a knife like this, £15, a cheap oil stone, granddad's, own, uh, granddad's old oil stone, a couple of minutes in the shed, you've got a screaming edge on that thing, ready to go back to work. That's really all I wanted to say, it's just some passing thoughts. Well, not really passing thoughts, I mean I had sort of thoughtless for a while. And uh, you might think this is a little bit hypocritical for a knife collector. That's that's fine, I understand that. Maybe I am. Uh, one other thing, actually. I have noticed on social media, some people say that no serious knife collector would buy certain knives, like cheaper Chinese knives, like, well, like Anglo Arms, actually, or M-Tech. In fact, have you ever seen those... You know, you know those knives that um, that seems to be the favourite weapon of choice by the the gangs in England, really. The uh, bayonet knives, the big ridiculous boys that you can get pretty cheap. Blades and bows used to sell them. Prepper shops sell them. Uh, we'd like to get one of those one day, by the way. Um, some people will say that there's that you shouldn't be selling them. I, I actually had one guy say to me, "No serious knife collector would buy a knife like that." Knife collectors like to go for certain steels, well, but who gets to decide who's a serious knife collector or not? Is it to do with the amount of money that you spend, the type of knives that you buy? Does it actually matter? In my opinion, a serious knife collector should have a Swiss Army knife, at least one. But it's subjective. I mean, you could see here, I've got a case knife, I've got a couple of case knives in my collection. So that's something a serious collector would probably have. I've got a couple of spider coats. I've got this beautifully made Doris Chastel knife made in France. But I've also got this El Chipo. Does that mean I'm no longer a serious knife collector? It's 8CR 14MOV. Kind of regarded regarded as a shit steel, but I've also got again one of my favourite knives, my Manly Wasp in S ninety V. Again, just a passing thought. Or is it to do with the number of knives you have? said a few times, I've got well over a hundred knives. But as Cutlery Lover would say, and by the way I'm a big fan of Cutlery Lover, you can get a boy who's only got maybe one or two really cheap knives, and you can have an older guy with loads of really expensive knives in his collection, and they could both lo love knives the same amount. I mean, here's me on the internet saying I've got hundreds of knives, and maybe you're just getting started and maybe you've only got one or two knives. Who's to say I like knives more than you? Maybe it's just harder for you to collect knives for whatever reason. You don't have the money, they're not available, maybe you're not of age. Maybe you're less than 18 and your parents won't allow you to have knives. You know what? That's fine. I get that. That's, That's fine too. I remember being there. Who's to say? Anyway, that's just something that's just sort of been bugging me, so I just thought I would share that. Uh, may maybe I'll sort of make a separate follow-up video to this, about the whole serious knife collector thing. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, thanks for watching, and definitely do let me know your thoughts in the comments, but please be nice to each other. 99% uh, of the time, the viewers of my channel are quite nice to each other, which is good. And uh, final thought... If you're interested, you're welcome to join my Facebook group, Scotsman762. Everyone's welcome. Come and show your knives. Show me your EDC, your collection. Come ask questions, that sort of thing. Small group, but it's growing really, really slowly. Everyone's welcome. Again, thanks for watching.